Hi, welcome to Their Education and working with their chisel. We are cutting Kennedy's hair today and we are going to give her a modern take on the pixie haircut. We will be using the Dare chisel uh, and with the Dare chisel it will give me the opportunity to cut the length but also give me a, a mass amount of texture on the end of the hair. Uh, so I haven't got to start doing two haircuts within one. I get length, I get texture, it all happens at the same time. Uh, the tool uh, was developed to add a certain degree of sculptural freedom to a haircut. When I was taught and trained initially, I was always extremely careful and pedantic about section patterns. When working with the chisel, you can be very loose and you're actually creating the haircut visually with your eye, taking off the lengths that you want. There is a loose amount of um, sectioning that you follow, but you're working very much with your eye and your gut and creating a perfect shape for your model. So I will get Kennedy prepared and we will start cutting with the chisel. So we've prepared Kennedy's hair, shampooed. We've pre-taken a horseshoe section, working from Kennedy's recession around to her crown. Um, this is the second part of our haircut. We will then take a vertical section straight down the center of Kennedy's head. Uh, and then we will take horizontal sections approximately one centimeter apart. We'll just clip that away. So important things to remember when you're working with your chisel is working from the elbow, ensuring that the angle you hit the hair at is pretty much a 45 degree angle. And the way to understand this, if you lift the head directly away from Kennedy's head, I sit my chisel straight on, and as I start to drop that section, I'll start to get a bit of resistance, generally, generally at around the 45 degree angle. And you find then that the chisel then works straight through. No tension, no force, just the weight of the chisel will take the hair away. And what I get really is a nice sort of chunky finish rather than a really, really wispy finish. If I put my razor, I'm always working with my wrist. When I'm working with my chisel, I'm always working with my elbow. So it's just getting used to how do I cut this hair off? So then I'll take that whole section, I'll get the hair pinched between the thumb and the forefinger. I'll make sure that I've got my 45 degree angle. I choose with my eye the length that I want from the scalp to the length that I want to maintain. I lift the hair up and I come straight through that hair sharp. And it comes off at a 45 without tugging at all Kennedy's hair. And it gives me a nice choppy finish. And when you think, oh, maybe there's a little bit too much length working through here, just go back, just chop that off, and then work around to your left-hand side. I can see what I've already cut on the right. I'm using that as my guide point, and I'm coming through 45 degree angle and just taking that hair off. So what I get is an uneven, choppy finish, exactly what I'm after. Previously, I would have cut a short haircut with my scissors. I cut it nice and clean. I might go back into it and start chipping the ends out to create that uneven finish. Working with my chisel, I get my length, I get my choppiness, and I get my texture all in one go. So I'm simplifying and speeding up the process of a nice, short, choppy urchin haircut. Then we work our way up the head. Again, section probably centimeter thick. Same thing, combing the hair up and away. That 
lead tooth always stays on the scalp and run that round to the hairline. It makes life easy if you comb that whole section across in the direction you want. It makes taking that section super simple. And the same thing then, combing that up and away. So as I was saying before, if I was to work with my razor, I'll be using my wrist. Working with my chisel, definitely working from that elbow. Importance, obviously not coming down at a 90 degree angle, always at a 45. The shape of the chisel has the weight sitting behind the blade, so that doesn't require much force, but you would take the hair off very, very simply without any discomfort to the client. Now, I'm gonna use that baseline as a guide, I will elevate, but ideally you're still using your eye to determine how long do I want this hair to be. So I want it to be about three centimeters, getting Kennedy's head into the right angle. Very easy to lose your comb and you're pinching between the thumb and the forefinger. So I've got a little bit of tension in there. Determining that length that you want to chop, positioning the chisel at the 45, coming above and finishing straight through the hair shaft. So I get this texture on the end of the hair. So it's not as wispy as your razor. It's nice and chunky. And always try and keep the hair damp. If it gets too dry, it can be a bit uncomfortable. And we just follow that around. Again, I can use the section I've taken on the right side to give me the length. Let's cut this left side. So it is in the comb, thumb, forefinger, lose that comb. I can see that length that I've already chopped, getting the angle of. So to get Kennedy's head down a bit makes it easier for me to create the right angle. Decide on the length, there it is, and straight through that hair shaft. And then we work our way up the hair towards the ears, again, centimeter sections. Climbing up, not away. So again, make sure that you've got your client's head at the right angle. Always coming from the underneath, pinching again, thumb, forefinger, deciding again on the length you want to cut. I do see the underneath as a, as a, as a guide. If I followed that underneath perfectly, you would get definitely create a longer length and create graduation as you're working up the head. You need to make sure that you're working with that two to three centimeter length that you've decided upon for this haircut. Again, getting the angle correct, 45, and just punching that hair off. As it's getting cut, we can start to see a nice choppy texture starting to happen on the end of the head. So people always ask me about, is it comfortable, this uncomfortable for the client, always supremely comfortable, as long as you've got the angle correct. The next section when I reach the ear will be taken from the center back right through to that front hairline. So that next centimeter will bring me across the ear to that front hairline. Now in a salon environment when I'm doing this haircut, I will actually go right through the right hand side up to that recession point. I won't go back and forth one side to the other. My guideline is pretty much set in what I've created with my eye. And I say I'm looking at that probably three centimeters. I'm gonna continue that around to that front hairline. Now 
And again, it's no, it's no drama. If you see a couple of loose, longer, stray hairs, it's no, no drama just to lift them. Lift them out and just punch them off. So as I said before, I'm gonna continue up Kennedy's head, right up to that um, crown and that recession point. And working from that center back. So just lifting it out, cross-checking visually. And I can see that the shape I'm creating, it's nice, nice and even realistically, even though I'm not utilizing any direct section patterns or guidelines. And once we put our basic shape in, we can go back and we can detail. So essentially, it's actually a very, very quick haircut to perform with an outstanding result. So just gradually lifting Kennedy's head as I'm working up. Again, looking at that eye, length is determining where I want it to be. 45 degree angle, just punch the chisel through the head. Again, every time I cut it off. The texture I see here on this end, there's a mirror image left on the head. So that's what I'm going to create. Again, elevating that head. As I said before, I can see what's been cut. Don't let it persuade you too much to cut it the same length because it will get longer. My eyes are going to what I'm cutting off here. And the beauty is that the client doesn't actually get hair down their neck because it's all in my hands. So I'm very confident that my eye is now creating a shape that's pretty much head shaped to Kennedy's head. And I can see just from that texture, I'm gonna get lots of volume if I want it or a nice choppy finish if I wear it flat. And then once we've cut the overall shape, we will come back and detail some of these edges uh, quite probable I'll take that hair away from the temple, open that temple up and that cheekbone up and still leave that underneath the cheekbone, but quick, efficient. There's no messing around with point cutting or using your texturizing scissors. I get the result quick and efficiently. And then repeat the process through the left-hand side. So making life easy, but combing the whole section beyond that front hairline. So when I take my next section from the centre back, comfortably over the ear, the hairs are all travelling in the same direction, taking that section become extremely easy. Coming the hair up and away. Again, I can see the length I've cut on the right side. So I'm just gonna follow that through to Kennedy's front hairline. working from centre back to the front hairline. Again, I determining the length. And the beautiful thing about this is each section as you're travelling up is going to be slightly different to the last one. So I'm going to get great texture and unevenness working this way, as well as great texture working along that, the section itself. If I wanted the perfect precision haircut, I certainly wouldn't be using the chisel. I want a symmetrical haircut with lots and lots of texture. So coming up, thumb, forefinger. So 
So working with horizontal sections and layering was always a no-no because it, it gave you a very lumpy finish. Working horizontal sections with a chisel, you want that lumpy finish. You want that lumpy finish with a mass of texture. And if I cross check that section, you will see there is a certain degree of uniformity about it, but you can see it's slightly uneven, but plenty of texture. And as I said before, we're going to lose that hair just around the temple. I'm going to sit that underneath the cheekbone. So temple areas on most haircuts, in fact, look far more attractive if they are shorter. It just draws out that cheekbone. The other thing too, we are going to cut this on Kennedy's neck. It's quite safe because we do have a guard on this chisel, which obviously can stop me chopping into her neck. Guard on. I can then sit this on Kennedy's neck, push down there. Create a slightly stronger edge. So a little detailing while it's wet. When we're dry, we can detail a fraction more. So again, I want to take some of that away from the cheekbone. And just sit it on the base of the ear. And again, coming down, sitting the chisel on, still a 45 degree angle as well. Again, you're not trying to push it through a neck. 45 degree angle, and just take some of that extra length away. Gives me a slightly choppier, slightly heavier finish. So we have the completed lower part of the haircut. Back, sides, all done, all quick, all efficient, texture length all in one, cross-checking pretty much, fingers into the roots, and then follow that out to the ends. So as I said, you want a certain degree of symmetry. It does not matter if you get the odd hair slightly different lengths, because it's exactly what you're trying to achieve. You're trying to achieve that, that choppy finish. And if I look at that, you can see we're getting that head shape of Kennedy beautifully. The next step will be to then connect this top part of the section to the lower part of the section. Different technique with the chisel. So essentially, coming up across that crown, we really want to leave a little bit of extra length. So I will drag this hair down to that previous section, which will leave it slightly longer. And then from the apex of the head, we're going to elevate straight up and we're going to push the chisel through the head. So, elevating the hair up, but I'm not putting it directly out from the head, I'm putting it straight down, which means you'll get slightly longer over that crown. Continue up to the apex. Again, making sure that the hair stays damp so you have control. And obviously the apex is where that comb or balance. So 
it just ensures like a little bit of extra length. So now, coming across that apex, we're elevating here. And effectively, splitting the two fingers so I can use my third finger as a support. And then keeping that 45 degree angle, and then I'm pushing that blade through the hair. And we're going to work that towards the front of Kennedy's head. So again, gripping the hair, forefinger, first finger, third finger sitting that down and pushing that blade. Checking to make sure I'm reasonably even. So keeping things real as well, Kennedy has a bit of a cowlick in the front. So I was uncertain whether I was gonna cut it super short or leave it a bit of length on it. And as we work towards the front, I will leave a little bit of length and decide whether I take it shorter depending on how the hair's going to sit with that cowlick. So initially just dragging that fringe back, allowing me a bit of extra length, just to see how that cowlick is going to behave. So obviously I'm changing, when I'm chopping the hair on the first part of the, of the haircut, I'm working very much on my elbow. Working through this top, the chisel then is spun around and I'm pushing that through the hair. Just making sure that I'm connecting the side to the top. So just coming through that fringe. Just checking out any bits that might be a little bit longer. So your cross-checking is very loose. Coming through the sides, making sure that I'm connecting with the sides. There's a nice little bit of overhang there, so. Take that off. And that's the beauty of this tool. It's, it's, there's no rules. And it's just getting that choppy, nice choppy texture. 
disconnect, and if you want to disconnect, no drama, because it's a choppy finish, it will sit beautifully. Just looking at that cowlick now, it's starting to dry. But this is longer, but it's drying up shorter. So what we'll probably do is we'll blast the hair off, look at how this fringe is behaving, possibly taking this side of the fringe up, uh, probably leaving that slightly longer, knowing that that cowlick is going to bring it up in the air. Now, it won't sit as, as a perfect fringe, so I'm going to work with that and make it work for us. And then once we've done that, we're going to channel. So I want to put some shorter lengths into that haircut and create a more choppy finish, which we'll use uh, the chisel, but when it's dry. So we're going to blast the hair dry, no product, and then do some channeling and some fine detail. So just working with the growth pattern, blasting the hair off. So, we can already see that we're getting, you know, quite a nice choppy texture in the hair. The fact that the hair has got texture on the ends is already starting to give me that little bit of elevation and lift. It's not sitting really flat to the head, but I want the end product to look even more dramatic and even more chunky. So what we do is we channel the hair, which means if you look at the, the blade of the chisel and we look at the guard, the guard has got rounded edges. So I can sit this edge of the guard flat on the head and I can push it through the hair and create an internal channeling effect. So I'll start diagonally across the head, chisel on the head and pushing that through. And that doesn't leave the scalp. Then I go back in the other way, the opposite direction. So again, the edge of the guard on the scalp and then coming across the head the other way. So you can see the hair that's coming out here. So it's looking at how much texture you want to create and channel that hair out. So you can see the, the line of the channel. So what we're creating is a much shorter length. When I finish that with product, it's going to give me that separation, make it look quite beefy. And again, through the opposite side. Should also give me a little extra lift in the hair. So it's one tall multitasking, chopping, thinning, creating shape. So just looking at that cowlick and seeing how that hair's behaving. The sounds quite aggressive when you listen to it, but it, 
It's not uncomfortable. So as that cowlick's pushing the hair across, I don't want, don't want a density here, so I want to go through and just break up that left-hand side. Just go around, detail in. Personalising as you see fit. Still a bit heavy through there, so again, sweep the hair off, go against that. Just remove a bit more of that weight on the round of the head. Okay, so before we finish with some product, I'm just going to recap. And what we've done, so we took out that horseshoe from the top, recession point round through across that crown. Then we took that vertical section straight down the back of the head to the nape, horizontal sections across, elevating that out and punching that off at a 45 degree angle with the chisel, working at one centimetre increments up the head. And again, using your eye to determine the length, which is what's great about this tool, you're not follow, following really closely that previous guideline. You're working your way up the head, then taking that section from the centre back right round across the top of the ear, complete that whole side. There's no point in going back and forth. You would then work your way around to the other side, Again, centre back across the front of that ear, work your way up to that recession point. Again, working with your eye, cross-checking with your fingers so you're, you're basically working as closely as you can to a head shape and reasonably symmetrical. We then took that top section, over-directed that back, working with the guideline below, so we end up with just a little bit more length. So when Kennedy says finally finish, we'll end up with a little bit more volume over that crown. Took that then to the apex. With the apex, we elevated the head straight up. We clamped in the fingers. We used that third finger as my rest point. Sat the chisel on there and we pushed that through again, twisting the chisel around from that sort of stabbing action to then pushing that through the hair. We worked from the apex through to that front hairline. Not sure how that cowlick was gonna behave, left it a little longer by over-directing slightly backwards, then went back to any overhang that would be on the sides, punched that hair off. We then blast dried the hair, and then by sitting on that round of the uh, guard, sat that chisel then straight on the scalp, and we pushed it on a 45 degree angle through, which gives me a, a form of channeling through the hair, which is gonna help give me the extra bit of lift but also extra bit of separation. So when we finish, the whole thing looks really chunky and choppy. Whether you blow it out and go really punky, or whether the whole thing sits flat, we get a lot of texture. So the chisel gives you so much and it's so quick and so efficient. I do have other tools in my bag. For this particular haircut, it's the perfect tool to use. So we will put some product in and we will finish Canada's hair. So we can this hair, I've just worked through um, a salt spray. Something that's gonna give me a bit of extra texture, a little bit of lift. I don't want anything too starchy. So I like uh, texture salt spray. It's gonna help give me a stronger finish. And then we're gonna finish, we put the salt base spray in there, then we're gonna finish with a texture paste. We really work that into the hair. 
Again, pulling the shape out as much as you can. Really make it look very scary. And then we then pop that back down. But it just ensures I get that product through the hair. Then we can work that down. Give us that flatter, choppier texture. Out and cross shape. Warm that product up and spread it a bit further. So, as far as candy is concerned, at home, simple shampoo, towel dry, bit of salt spray. She can work it dry naturally or she can just blast it. No brushes, just fingers. And she's good to go.